Hey there, good morning. Welcome to Growth and Grace Day. This morning we are talking through something that is, I don't want to say near and dear to my heart, but it's definitely something that my heart has gone through and something that I lived in for many years that I want to share with you how to not get stuck in it because it's like a really awful place to be. And that place is isolation. And I'm just going to point out the clever title where I use the word ice in isolation because really at the end of the day, you're freezing yourself out and that's what ice does. So huh, please appreciate that because that was like a little light bulb moment when I did that. But what I want to share with you this morning is how to not isolate when that feels like your default response when what you want to do is cut people out or stop leaving your house or you just want to like take everything on your own shoulders and do it all on your own. Let me tell you firsthand, that's not the best way to do it. Um, it sucks and don't do that. So that's my very first part. I'm just going to address it right off the bat to tell you, stop it. Don't do it. And I'm going to also address why it's like how to actually do that. And I'm not condemning you for doing it. I lived in it for many years. I'm just advising you against it because it's not great. So how can you not isolate when that's what you want to do? Right? Like, I, and I remember being in those moments where I was like, I don't even want to be around people. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to have conversations. I don't want to see another person. Like, I just want to be in my quiet house by myself with my pets, playing solitaire. Like, I get it. And from a healthy place now, I would love to share a few simple things that you can do to help you get out of isolation or help prevent you from slipping into isolation if that's kind of the direction that you feel yourself heading. So very, very first and foremost, as is with most things, recognize that that's a pattern that you have, recognize that that's a default response you have to scenarios. If you find yourself wanting to withdraw, wanting to pull away, wanting to shut people out, wanting to handle everything on your own, not wanting to burden people, that's such a common one. And if you find yourself having those thoughts going, I just don't want to, you know, they have, they have things going on. I don't want to be a burden to them. And even I have, even to this day, I still have those thoughts. And what's different today than how I handled this years ago is that today I'm actually able to combat those thoughts and be like, okay, that's not real. Like you're actually not being a burden to them. You're sharing your life with them. You're giving them an opportunity to share wisdom and guidance with you. And they're friends. That's what friends do. And it's not me showing up and just like, well, everything is awful and life is terrible. That was old me in the past. This is me showing up going, okay, I don't know how to handle, like I'm feeling stuck, I'm feeling frustrated, and I'm feeling alone, but I know that I'm not alone. And then showing up and sharing with people and letting them in. So first step always is gonna to be to recognize where you're at, and if any of those things triggered for you and you're like, oh, I totally do that, I definitely would like prefer to be on my own and, and not welcome people in, or like if things start getting, stressful or if I start feeling overwhelmed or, you know, if I start feeling like, oh my gosh, what am I doing with my life? Then if your response and your default is to want to do it on your own and be by yourself and not let people in, chances are you are on a track that could lead to isolation. So let's address that before you get there. Cool? Okay, cool. This is actually a lot simpler than it may seem because it isolation is such a big thing and it can feel like such a heavy weight for us to be isolated. But at the end of the day, the simple, simple, simple truth of it is you can actually do something different and you don't have to stay stuck in that. So here's, here's what this can look like. And I'm just going to tell you, prep yourself because you might not want to hear what I'm about to say. And the reason I'm sharing it anyway is because this is what actually can work to help you out of isolation. So I'm not going to pretend that it's easy. I'm not going to pretend that it's the most fun thing you'll ever get to do in your life. And I know it works. I've walked through it. So know that what I'm about to share is 
how I personally was able to start overcoming my isolation. And it involves other people. <laughs> so I know for some of you that's an immediate like, oh, other people, not my favorite thing. I'd really rather not. What about, is there a way to do it with like puppies and not people? Not as effectively, although puppies are amazing and they can help break the barrier between you and other people because they're often attached to a person on the other side of the leash. So yes and no, involve puppies wherever you want. They're always great. I would say for when you're struggling with isolation or you're feeling like you're going down that path, honestly, a really healthy thing that you can do is to actually get yourself around people. Easier said than done, I get it. It's taking the opportunity to say yes to an invitation when everything in you wants to say no. It's taking the time to, instead of just bolting into the grocery store and then leaving right away, interact with someone there. Like, talk to them in the produce department or interact with your cashiers you're checking out. You know, actually connect with someone. It, when you go to church, it's not just going in for the service and leaving right away. Talk with people. Like, you're there for community. You're there to build with each other. And if you're just in and out and you're not ever connecting with anyone, you're honestly, you're kind of missing the point. Like, it's not just about Sunday. So connect with people and then like actually have conversations with them and get to know them before you leave for the day or show up early to connect with people. If you're in a, um, like if you're involved in activities, my mom was sharing with me um, about one of her neighbors whose sons passed away a couple years ago and it just devastated her and she's stopped going to all of her activities. She's quit. Her book club, she's quit going to church, she's quit doing all the things that she used to do, and understandably she's grieving, and it's been a couple years and she's not gotten plugged back in, and now her life is very, um, it's very dehydrated, and it's very constricting because she's not allowing other people in. So if you find that you have maybe been doing it for a long time and you're like, I don't even know how to start. Start with something. Find a meetup group with a topic that interests you. And know that whatever you're saying yes to right now doesn't have to be a lifetime thing. Like if you say, okay, I'm going to go try a book club. I'm going to try it. I'm going to go. I'm going to meet the people, whatever. It doesn't mean that you're signing up for that book club for life and that you have to commit to that Tuesday evening every night for the rest of your life at all. So I'm going to relieve that pressure because that was something I actually lived under for a while was I don't want to go try it if I'm not going to like fully commit to it and be all in. And yet there are things that you get to try first. You do get to try. If you don't love the book club, it's okay. You don't have to go to the book club anymore, but you get to try it. You get to get yourself out there. So First and foremost, like recognize if isolation is something that you're defaulting to and then allow yourself to explore what, if I were to do something on my own, what would it be? Maybe it's hiking, maybe it's reading, maybe it's going and, um, you know, doing coffee tastings at different coffee shops around town. Maybe it's going to get your hair done. Maybe it's going to one of those paint and sip classes. Like whatever it is, find a group of people, there's likely already a group of people already doing that thing. Or invite someone, connect with someone. Like I know for me, my neighbor and I, we we had met a couple times, her and I would like, we'd come home at the same time. or And then finally we were just like, why don't we just try, maybe if we're gonna both go for a walk around the bay, we both left our house at the same time to go for a walk around the bay and our doors are like right there, like we're walking in the same direction. Why don't we just walk together and make it an intentional thing and get to know each other? And to be honest, I can be super socially awkward. And it was a little uncomfortable to be like, okay, I don't really know you. And like, I don't know how this is going to go. And it was great. And we've actually been intentional about hanging out since then. So just, you don't know what it's going to turn into, but you do have to make the first choice. Like it's not up to other people to come rescue you. And I lived under that for a long time too, of like, you know, if, 
if it's meant to be, then someone that I so enjoy will want to ask me to hang out and have it be the exact dreamiest scenario that I would want it to be. But let me tell you what, that's not how it works. So you get to make the first move. You get to be the one to step out and be like, okay, I'm going to do this. It's a little uncomfortable, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to try it. I'm going to put on my courage and I'm going to go for it. And it only takes a couple seconds of courage to ask. And then you don't need to have courage anymore. It just takes a second. So just put it on real quick and then ask and then, and then you're good. So let it be just that moment of courage as you feel it bubbling up, as you feel that discomfort, like, <laughs> let that be motivating. Let yourself go there in the moment and know that it just takes that couple quick seconds to ask someone and see if they would want to go grab coffee or see if they want to go hiking on Saturday or see if they, you know, would love to go try that coffee shop or if, you know, have you ever done one of those paint and sip things I've been wanting to try it? Let's schedule it just it's so quick so take the courage take the step and know that if you are in isolation right now or you're kind of heading down that track know that I so see you I have been there and I know how like truly like stressful anxiety inducing it can feel to decide that you're going to step out of that and decide that you're going to do something different and I'm not gonna lie to you, it can be very uncomfortable to put yourself in scenarios where you are no longer isolating. It was super uncomfortable for me. I did a Facebook Live a few months ago about how I used to get nauseous when I left my house. Like it was wildly uncomfortable for me to leave my, my home, like to walk out of the door, to go get the mail. Like it was so stressful for me. And there's a lot of things that go along with that and things that we can look at as far as like why is that the case and as we're discovering those things because there are real things that are having you feel this much anxiety and stress so as we're figuring out those things you can actually be taking steps to help get yourself out of it and help redirect the path that you're on so don't feel like it's a, a lost cause because it's super not a lost cause. It's simply going to take some action from you and those actions may be uncomfortable at times. So know that it's totally possible though and it can start as a small thing. I'm not telling you that you're, you need to all of a sudden have like 10 best new friends and you need to start going to you know, huge concerts where there's tens of thousands of people and you need to put yourself in the most extreme scenarios. No, you do not. That is not you don't need to, you can, that is one way of doing it, but you don't need to. It really simply takes an intentional choice and the decision to, I'm going to interact with someone. I'm going to make eye contact with someone as I'm walking along the bay. That's one that still gets me sometimes. And I'm like, oh, okay. I know I'm on a walk by myself on the bay, but I leave my house every day to go interact with people. That's like an intentional choice I made years ago when I thought, okay, I'm this isolation, it was getting out of hand and I was so depressed. And that was a choice where I was like, I need to like, I need to have people. You can't have people if you don't interact with them. <laughs> it's kind of one of those. So I decided I was like, okay, I'm going to leave my house. I'm going to interact with someone every day. And that someone, sometimes it was a dear friend. Sometimes it was um, a total stranger. Like it, it, it just depended on who was there and where I was and what situations I was putting myself in. And those are the people I interacted with that day. So know that you can have it be, um, it can look multiple different ways. There's not a right or a wrong way to do it. From my experience though, it was incredibly helpful to get out and make those small choices of, okay, all I'm going to do today is I'm going to look up and look someone in the eye and hold it for one and a half seconds. I mean, it doesn't take long to be longer than you've done it before. And it doesn't take long for it to be like an intentional, like, yes, I'm making eye contact with you and I'm smiling thing for strangers to have that moment. And it doesn't have to be some uncomfortable, you're not, you don't have to hold eye contact and stare them down the whole time that they're walking through and walking by you. That's creepy. Just make eye contact and smile and then you can look away. But you got to choose to be intentional about it and you got to choose to do something different than what you've done before. So go out there, let yourself get a little uncomfortable. It's totally fine. It's going to help you grow. 
And life is so much sweeter on the other side when you can be with other people and you can be sharing life with others. So get out there. And if you see me walking on the bay, feel free to hold eye contact and smile. I'll likely be doing the same thing unless there's a puppy nearby and then they might have my attention for the time being. So I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next week, each Thursday, 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern for another episode of Growth and Grace. See you then. Bye for now.